Let's move now to St. Louis, Missouri. On Saturday, activists around the world took part in the global march against Monsanto, rallying against GMO foods. So from St. Louis to Sydney, hundreds of protesters demanded standard labeling for genetically modified organisms, and they called for an end to what they see as Monsanto's unsustainable and destructive agricultural practices. And this was the second march against Monsanto. And a similar action took place this past May. All the actions took place worldwide. St. Louis, we say, was at the heart of it because Monsanto headquarters are based there. So we're joined now by one of the March Against Monsanto organizers, Angie Morelli. So welcome, Angie. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, so tell us how it went this weekend. How many people came out? Would you call it a success? Yeah, I mean, everything that we do, that anytime we put our names out there and anytime we're raising awareness about genetically modified organisms, it's a success. That's all we're here for, is to raise awareness about the issue and to put pressure on our politicians to start making the correct decisions as to uh, what's representing us and what's not representing us. And of course, uh, you know, we know that Monsanto, being a large corporation, it is, has a lot of friends in Washington. They have a lot of money to lobby, uh, you know, to, to keep their own uh, business afloat, I guess you could say. But we did recently see a few legislative victories that really were beating them down, um, you know, in, in terms of allowing lawsuits against Monsanto. So, I mean, do you see some progress in Congress at this point? We see a tremendous amount of progress. I mean, the thing is, is that it's kind of an inside joke with us is that they've got billions of dollars that they're using to dump on different initiatives that are getting passed, for instance. Uh, Monsanto specifically had spent over $8 million in California uh, trying to defeat, and they did, uh, defeat Proposition 37. Um, they're dumping millions of dollars into defeating uh, Propos or the Initiative 522 in Washington right now. And uh, they're going up against a bunch of mothers and neighbors that are basically having non-GMO bake sales and making bracelets in their living rooms at night to try and raise money to make flyers for these marches. So I think that, you know, uh, we're we're winning in that aspect. Um, you know, but the thing is, too, the United States it definitely stands out here. There are 62 countries that have laws regulating GMOs, and we are not amongst those ranks. So, what is, what is it that you think that's holding us back? Well, that's that's a very good point. You know, where the United States and Canada are the only two industrialized companies that are countries that do not have GMO labeling. And there's something wrong with that. And that's where a lot of us kind of got into this fight is that, you know, this is not a personal choice of I want to eat healthy or I don't want to eat healthy. We're being, they're not allowing us to have the choice. We want labeling so we'd be able to uh, basically make that decision for ourselves. And there's a lot of uh, questions about what's going on with our government right now and what's going on with our FDA when, um, you know, these are concerns that are being brought up and um, they're still not addressing them. But, I mean, in the last six months since the first march against Monsanto, we've seen a tremendous amount of uh, awareness. We've seen a lot of companies themselves that have come out, like, for instance, Target and Chipotle coming out and saying that they're going to start labeling GMOs and phasing them out. So uh, the bottom line is, is that we vote with our dollars. And as soon as we get the awareness out there and we get people understanding uh, the implications of what these genetically modified foods and pesticides can do, uh, basically, hopefully people will start voting with their dollars and making the right decisions as to what's good for them and their families. Yeah, and maybe we can't, uh, we can't help but mention the importance, obviously, of having this information out there in order for people to be able to actually make those uh, educated decisions on what it is that they want to eat and ingest. And so, you know, that's one of the things that companies like Monsanto have been fighting against the hardest, I'd say, is just not allowing people to really know what's going on. So, Angie, thanks for joining me. Yep, thank you. All right, now we move to Guan.